so to continue this lesson post nine point three i did make a mistake on the previous notes this number is nineteen if we go down to the back side we were in the middle of the credit card example on the credit card example once again we have the recursive formula that we're going to be paying the interest or on the previous amount that we borrowed from the bank and then we're going to be paying off fifty dollars when we pay off fifty dollars we're going to be subtracting fifty from what we owe so this would be a minus and your initial would be two thousand dollars so when you set this up on your calculator you can start with two thousand dollars and then go down from there i believe in the previous video i showed you how to set that up now at the fixed point that means that the now term is equal to the previous term. So you can call both of these things x. And so you set up this equation. When you solve this out, you get x equal to $3,333.33. What does that mean? Well, what it does mean is that if I plug that into my calculator and I pay off the $50 every month with the initial value of this, that means that I will have that balance every month. I will never pay this off. And so if you look on your calculator, I can put this in, same exact equation, 3,333, and look at this, even into five years later, you're still paying the same amount. So this $50, all it's doing is servicing the interest on your loan, so to speak. And so you'll never get out of here. And in fact, if you crank this up and say, for instance, you charge a few more things, I think in five years you might charge a few more things. And if you don't pay it off, I put the 11 there, that's okay. If I don't pay that off, look at what happens to my balance after five years. It keeps on going up. So that means now the $50 doesn't even serve the, service the interest. The interest is gonna be more than this $50. I think at some point in time, I hope the bank would step in and force you to pay more or do something else, but you can't keep on going on with this debt. All right? So that would be a credit card example. If you do a similar thing with an annuity, the difference with an annuity, and you can look at different uh, ways uh, of doing an annuity, you can consider it to be something that you do through an insurance company. That, necessary, that isn't necessarily that good because you lock in and you have to make continuous payments for a set amount of years. And so if you run into trouble or run into problems, you, you, to access that money, you'll pay a stiff, stiff penalty. You'll lose money on the deal. Uh, if you do the same thing with some sort of mutual fund or buy some stocks, it might be a little bit more risky, but if you ever need to access that money, whatever money you have in an account at that time, you can sell it and pull it out in case of an emergency. So I would, uh, personally, I'd prefer that, but everybody's different. Okay, so Lisa has started an annuity that pays 5% annual interest. She puts in $200 each month for 10 years. Uh, find the amount of the annuity after the, in the first six months. Assume that she starts with $200 in the account. You can set this up on your calculator. Why don't you go ahead and try this and pause. Get this into your calculator, and this means that my zero term, I'm gonna start with depositing $200. Uh, if you do a web work assignment, I think this one starts at zero, and this is zero, if you do the same type of problem. Uh, it's always a little bit fuzzy, where do you start, where do you finish, but uh, I guess we can get some leeway in there a little bit. And then the difference here is that you're gonna be adding $200 in this recursive formula. You're gonna be adding $200 every month and I'm going to be paying 5% interest compounded monthly. So if you put that in, you should be able to get these values. In your table, you can uh, figure out how much money you expect to have in 10 years. You can do it with the table. Uh, I, have my, I still have my previous example here on this. Uh, the other way to do it, this is still the credit card example, but I'll just show you how to plug it in. You can go second seven and then plug in your specific value that you want. So if you want uh, 96 months, you can plug that in like that and then you get a value rather than scrolling all the way down or else you can do table set and then turn this to ask and put in whatever values you want and that will give you what you need to know. I think both ways work, both ways are good to have. Okay, then the fixed point of this one, if you set up X equals 
x times 1 plus 0 0.05 divided by 12 plus 200 and find the fixed point, you're going to end up with negative 48,000. For the annuity, it really doesn't make any sense. All you can do is turn it around and use it as a credit card example. If I owed $48,000 and I paid $200 a month, I would be servicing the interest portion of the credit card. That's all you can think about. But for annuity, I don't think it makes any sense. All right, and there's the homework that you did for the post 9.3 and the recursive thinking, and that would be it. This is part two. Thank you.